Hey guys, Paul Carl here. Today we're gonna to get to the basics of doing some eBay uploads with the reports tab. So here I'm logged into my eBay. Um, you're gonna to go to the reports and uploads tab here. And this is where you're gonna see where you can upload stuff. So you can see I just uploaded one. Um, this is where you click upload and you choose your file. So for me, this would be this file here. And once you do that, you're done. The listings are up. Uh, but in order to get to that point, you need to get the template first. So you pick a source, you click on get template, select source, we're going to do listings, and then create new list. So we're going to select the file type. You can do either one. I'm going to do an Excel spreadsheet. It's the same thing, basically. And the category, you get to pick whatever eBay categories you're going to do. Um, so for us, that's sports cards. We're going to do sports trading cards, and then we want the singles. And click done. And now we can download this. It's, eBay is generating the template right now. And we'll compare this template to what I have because there's some extra fields that I think are worth adding. Um, so I'm going to just put this on the desktop. I just wanted to add in that if you don't have Excel, you can use LibreOffice. This is free open source software. Um, I don't know how good, good or bad the macros are with it, if it's compatible with Excel macros. Uh, probably not but this is a free option and then there's also Google Sheets you can work with this kind of data in Google Sheets but if you're gonna plan on using macros and like some of this automation stuff then I would highly recommend just getting Excel you can get a business account for like uh, I don't know it's like 15 bucks a month um, but yeah let's get back into the video and let's do we'll just leave it whatever you can tell I put a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of planning into this video. So we'll put this side by side with my listing template here. So you got the action. You don't need this info. You can actually delete all that. Um, let me expand this one here. So you can see I do keep all that same text. So you have your action. They give you drop downs so you can choose different things for some of these. And it kind of just shows you what it is. Uh, we'll get better information. What is the category name? Here we go. There's a drop down. So you pick that. These are all your own things. Add. It's going to ask you for the title. So now relationship. This is if you wanted to do a variation listing. That's what relationship is for. Um, this is if you want to have like the choose your card style listing. I don't recommend them. Um, I've tested them out and a lot of customers based on both my tests, um, like cause I have a lot of 1991 upper deck. So I had a bunch of single card listings up and then I had the variation cards listing up. And with the variation, I even made it bold. I gave it a subtitle. I spent like the five bucks. I even spent the extra $2 to have it show up in the UK versus just plain normal single card listings. Single card listings outsold it easily. A lot of people don't actually know what the variation listings are or how they work. So you're going to lose out on some customers because they'll just scroll right past that. Um, a lot of people, if they're just looking for one card and not to actually complete their set, they, uh, they, they get frustrated. They click on that listing, they go through the whole drop down, try to find the card and then realize it's out of stock. So they kind of get trained to skip past those listings and look for the single card. Now, if you have somebody like me who might be looking for like the, the very best deal on whatever cards, then I will use and abuse people's variation listings because some of the people that run them will sell cards as cheap as 20 cents a piece on eBay with free shipping. So there are opportunities to buy there, but I don't think there are as many to sell. So you actually don't even need relationship details. UPC doesn't apply to trading cards, neither is ISBN or any of this stuff. So a lot of stuff you can just get rid of. So like, I just delete those. And so you see I have, oh, the category ID. I think they hid that. Did they hide that? Yeah, you can see right here, they hide it. Oops. Um, so this is something that can trip you up potentially because since they hide this cell, you don't see this category ID. So you might put in, you know, your listing for one and then go down to the next one, this hidden cell will still be blank and you'll get errors for everything you do. So you want to actually copy and paste that all the way down. And I don't know why. Oh, it looks like there's a formula here. Huh. 
okay, yeah, so I guess they hide it and they auto they might automatically insert it. But I don't I don't like that way. I'd rather just see it there filled in for everything. Um, all right, we'll just leave that the way it is. Um, so start price, I think that's that's gonna be your buy it now price also. Um, so start price is actually the same thing as buy it now. Um, and it's also your start price for the auction. That can be confusing because the buy it now price, if you're doing a single listing, that's what you're used to filling in buy it now. But this column only applies if you're auctioning it. So we're gonna get rid of that. Um, quantity, self-explanatory. The photo URL, this is where you're gonna put the, the link um, like google.com is a link, a URL. Um, whenever you do these listings, you're going to need to have a link to a website to put them, put the um, photos to. So you have to come up with a way where you can efficiently populate this field without having to like manually copy and paste links from Image Shack. That's a nightmare. Um, conditions always going to be used. Um, description you can put in uh, like your boilerplate or whatever. And then there are some ways with the macros to kind of automatically and dynamically populate your description based on the title. Um, that's something I'm going to get into into a later video. Duration is going to always be good to good till canceled unless you're doing auctions this way. I don't think you actually need. So I got the condition form description immediate payment required. I always have no for that. I, here's that the PayPal is irrelevant because eBay doesn't use it anymore location this one will give you problems because it's going to if you put like your zip code in there it doesn't show it properly in the listing um so i'm not actually too sure how you do this the city and state so i guess you would like for me it would be like utica new york but i've done that and it doesn't appear to work properly maybe i'm dumb i don't know um, but what i did is i replaced location with postal code and then your um whatever your postal code is, so 13502 and then 2432, that's what you would put in there with postal, co postal code, and you can just change this. Um, what I would do is copy and paste this um, as like plain text into whatever you're going to use, and uh, that way you don't have to worry about all the stuff eBay has built into the spreadsheet, like that hidden formula that I didn't realize existed, but <laughs> that thing has given me problems in the past. Uh, payment instructions I don't think you need duration yep I have that gone immediate payment is there the shipping service so these things this is where you would like manually put in what the service would be so like first class or um, eBay standard envelope I don't know what the syntax is for that um, and you don't have to worry about it either because you don't really need that shipping service information and the reason for that or you don't need this dispatch you don't need all this stuff all these returns and refunds and yada yada. Uh, all you need is the profile name. So that's where you get your uh, business policies. So let's pull that up real quick. So we'll go to my listings, business policies. So that's right here on the left side under settings. Um, so these are all your different payment policies and eBay will automatically create some. I have like hundreds for whatever reason, even though I try to clean them up. Um, but so I have the eBay payments which for some reason eBay copied it and it's just been using that. So that's what I use <laughs> now. Um, and then I have my PWE shipping. That's the name of my shipping policy, the name of my payment policy. And then you need a name for your return policy. And mine is card return. And then I also have this trading card shipping policy, which I use for the thicker cards that can't go into um, like a plain white envelope because it'll damage the card. Those go first class with the trading card shipping policy. But the three main ones you're going to need if you're doing like bulk commons are your plain white envelope shipping option and uh, that's that's the most important one. So you need these shipping policy names and you put these names into your um, into the profile name here. So for me that would be like the PWE shipping and then return would be card return and then payment is the eBay payments copy. <laughs> Um, so none of these things don't matter either. You don't need those. Uh, grade is going to pretty much be no every time. Sport, you can populate that properly, but you have to use um, one of the eBay um, 
uh, sports here. You, you can't label it something custom. Like, if I wanted to say racing, I couldn't just put racing. I couldn't put car racing. I'd have to put auto racing. So that's that's an important thing to know, too. Um, this They have just a list of all the different players. Uh, this is pretty easy to populate automatically, and you can have custom ones in there without errors. So if you have a card that has two players on it, like with my macro, if I have a card with um, Otani and Trout on it, it will take that Otani and Trout player name and put it in here. So even though it's not on the drop down here, you are allowed custom um, entries. So that would still, that would work without causing an error. Um, parallel, you won't need this much. I usually leave it blank. I don't think I even keep that on here. It's a nice, um, it's a nice one to use if you're going to do like parallel, like if you have a, a hundred uh, chrome refractors, you could put them in, you can use this in that case, maybe insert it and add it. But since I usually have like a mix of different cards and sets in here, um, or it's all base cards, I don't use this one that much, but it's something that that's on my radar to add in at some point to the macro. Um, season, this is optional too. You don't really need that. Manufacturer, I like to add that. Usually I'll just use the set name. So I think um, if it's like Tops Chrome, the macro will put in Tops Chrome, but I think the proper thing is just Tops. Yeah, just Tops. Um, but that's something where you can put custom stuff into. Uh, feature, usually I just put this I usually leave blank, but if I did all base cards, I'll do, uh, I'll just put in the base set or base card. I've been putting in base cards, so I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> so base set is what I should be putting in there. Um, set, same thing here. Um, this pulls it the year and then whatever I put for the set field, it'll populate into here. Grade is irrelevant. I think I have that deleted. League, I don't put in there either. These are all optional uh, custom labels. Team, I do use. Autographed, I have set as no by default. I got to change the macro so that if it is autographed, it will change it to yes for me automatically. Um, right now, I think all my autographs that are listed just say that it's actually not autographed <laughs> in the item specifics, which probably isn't ideal. Um, and then card condition, this is another one where you can, these are based on eBay's card descriptions. Uh, so usually it's going to be near mint or better. If you're doing a lot of vintage, you might use some of these other ones. And uh, I have in the macro, it'll adjust this accordingly um, based on my chrono card export. Um, card name. I don't think I use card name, do I? It has like a 75 character limit because what I was doing was using the eBay listing title for the card name. But since the title can be longer than the card name can be, it can create errors where it won't upload certain cards because the card name's too long. And then you got to go back and delete and re-upload. So I just stopped using that one. <clears throat> um, certification number you don't need. Card number, that's easy to populate automatically. And then type is just going to be sports trading card every single time. So that's kind of an overview. That's the stuff that you would be entering into your uh, field here. Some other ones that I added was weight major and weight minor. What this does is it automatically puts, I have it set to automatically do one. So it's going to automatically put one ounce as my weight. <clears throat> and what that does is it just makes it easier when I'm doing the shipping labels. You don't have to type in one, 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 one over and over and over again when you're bulk printing your labels. So that's really convenient to have for that purpose. You just have to make sure, like if somebody buys three cards, since you can't put a fraction here, um, it's gonna say three ounces. So you wanna change that back to like one. Cause, uh, depending on how you ship, you can ship generally up to three cards and have it be under one ounce if you're just using like one semi-rigid to hold the three cards. One last thing to sneak in here on this reports tab where you got the template, um, learning resources. You need to know about this. So if you click on le learning resources, come to create listings in bulk. This is going to take you to their, this is basically the documentation and everything that I talked about, I learned from trial and error and from actually reading some of this stuff. Um, so you can see all this information required versus optional, what everything means, what types of uh, entries can be in here. Oh, they put the character limits too. That's actually good to know because I forgot about that. And that can help with some of the automations, making sure it truncates anything that's too long. Um, but you can see it's a little bit dated up to 12 pictures. I don't know if that's just a limitation for this process in particular or if it's for um, 
or, or if you can still do 24 pitchers, which is an option now. Um, but it kind of shows you everything here. And one thing I will highlight real quick is if you do uh, want to do variation listings, despite my uh, my opinions on them, this is where you can kind of see what it looks like for how you would create the variations, what you got to do for the relationships, and then also how you um, would do their images. And one thing that I don't know if they show it, uh, when you're doing like front and back images, you want to use uh, one of those little pipes to um, segment them. I think it shows it. Yeah, right here. So up to 12 pictures. So this shows you the example here. So this, this would be like your front picture and then you do a little pipe um, and then you do your second URL for the, the second, third, fourth, so on. Um, usually you'll just have two pictures for cards, obviously. Um, but yeah, this documentation will be very helpful if you have uh, questions that I didn't answer or um, if you just want to tinker with this stuff yourself. So yeah, that's that's kind of the, the breakdown of how this all works. So you would just type all this stuff in or if you're doing it a, a little bit of a better way, you'll have it automatically populate. So that's, that's what I want to talk about next is how to automatically populate these things um, and create macros to do that for you from checklists or from chrono card exports. I'm going to do a video on that eventually. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, I want to show you how to self host the images. I think that is going to be a separate video too. Uh, but this is just kind of a basic overview of the um, the listing format for this thing, just to kind of explain all these categories and different headings that you may or may not need. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. And if you have any suggestions for improvements that I haven't mentioned, uh, please let me know those too because I'm always trying to make the processes better better and smoother and the more item specifics I can add in without having to do extra work <laughs> or manual data entry the better um, so yeah let's talk about that stuff and, and make this as efficient as possible for everyone thanks for watching